Amen. Amen. Say Jesus. Jesus. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Miles, Pastor The Rock. Welcome to church. God bless y'all. And we want to say hello to everybody watching in East County, North County, uh, in our micro sites out there in Coronado and all over San Diego. God bless y'all. Let's give all those people a hand. God bless y'all. God bless you. How's everybody doing today? Very good. Y'all ready to rock and roll? Uh, two very quick announcements before we pray. Uh, one, we are opening our uh, San Isidro campus in September. We want to encourage all y'all from down that way. And anybody who wants to go online, uh, sign up and get volunteers. We're starting to get our volunteer crew and all our teams ready. And also to support it financially. Obviously, it's not free. And to support it financially, especially for all y'all who are on our, our Pervasive Hope campaign, that you pledge money towards our expansion. So we just want to encourage you to continue to give. And about two months ago, I shared with you that I had this opportunity that was scaring me. It was really big and challenging. Do y'all remember that? Yes. And I told you I was going to tell you what it was. Well, what it was, was there is a, uh, um, a well-known talk show in Los Angeles. I don't want to say the people's name, but you would know them. They're very, very nationally known bigger. And they uh, were offering me an opportunity to have my own talk show five days a week uh, in L.A., uh, well, based out of L.A., um, to talk, to help people using the Bible. As a pastor, they said, we want you to be a pastor, and it's a talk show every day. And I would go up, you know, seven days a month or so and film all these tapes, and we'll come on Monday through Friday. Um, and that's what it was. And we're not gonna, I'm not going to do it. Uh, the reason is, is I said, look, they offered me, they, they first came to me last September, right after I got sab from sabbatical, and I said, no, I'm not interested. And they kept saying, you can do this. I said, I, I don't want to do it. Uh, you know, and so... They finally wore me down and said, you know, here's his opportunity. Want you to be a pastor? Da 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 da. I said, well, we'll see. And but I said, look, this is this is my number one love right here. So whatever happens there, has to, you know, I can't jeopardize this. And what they offered me was not a secure for that. So I just said no. So that's what it was. Anyway, same. <laughs> However. <laughs> However, just keep praying because, you know, now, we're, now we got a little toes in there. We're going to see, see what's going to happen. So we're going to see what's going to happen. It was, it was an interesting process, but was, I, I've always wanted to be, uh, do some talk show. I never imagined myself doing that. But we, we actually, after we thought about it, we thought about how it could work and what it could be. So we don't know what's going to happen, but that is past, and we'll see what's going to happen in the future. I appreciate you praying for those opportunities. Amen. Let's get on our knees. How many of y'all have uh, some burdens you're carrying? You come to the right place. Lord, thank you so much for being a burden bearer. And we thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness to us. Thank you for uh, always being there for us. Always. God knows what you're going through. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. 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 How many of you know that sometimes in your family you don't tell them you love them enough? Okay, so I want to tell you I love you. I love y'all, and I love, I'm going on vacation, but I, but I love you. I love you. That's why I love you, so I'm going on vacation. <laughs> let's see, let's see your Bibles. That's not why I love you, I just wanted to say it. <laughs> One more time, say word. Very good. Let's turn to Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6. I do. I, I love y'all. love being a pastor of the church. love everything about this. Daniel 6. That's Old Testament. Somewhere around the middle. Matter of fact, on my Bible... It is page 615. <laughs> Not that that's going to help you at all. <laughs> Daniel chapter 6. Okay. If you are still looking, say amen. amen. Mm 
If you found it, say amen. amen. Okay, if you're still looking and you feel really bad, say amen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> okay. Um, two pastors were in a car. This is a true story. It's not a joke. <laughs> two pastors were in a car, and I know, I know both these pastors, and I was told this by one of the pastors. Pastor A was telling me about a trial he had gone through with his church and some stuff and how he was crying, God, why is this happening to me? And he was telling me the story, and then he was in a car telling this to Pastor B, who had also been through a very difficult time. And he's telling me, I was telling this pastor, I'm going through this, and we're in the car driving, and I was crying my heart out to him, telling him what was going on. And he reaches over, Pastor B, and puts a hand on my shoulder, and he says, Pastor, the reason you're going through this, the reason God is allowing you to go through this, is because he can trust you with trouble. He can trust you with trouble. And I said to the pastor when he told me that, can I use that title for a sermon? I really didn't have to ask him, but I just wanted to tell him. Can God trust you with trouble? We will all go through stuff our whole life to, to death. When I, my father died last year, and we all watched him die over three days. He just was in a coma, and he just took his last breath, but it took him three days. The doctor said it's going to be about three days, and he's going to die. And he did. It was during those three days, it dawned on me the pain of dying. And we all don't know how we're going to die. If you die in your sleep, man, you're blessed. Um, we're going to have trouble all our life, and God wants to know, can he trust you with trouble? Can he trust you to be faithful through the trouble and not turn your back on him? And if he has allowed you to go through something, even if you brought it on yourself, God trusts that you're going to do the right thing in your trouble. It's the hardest time to be faithful. So I, my prayer today is that you would be encouraged to be faithful in your trouble. That God would say, great job. Because it's easy to praise God when things are going good. It's easy to be all in a good mood when things are right. You, your job is going well, you're earning money, you got a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. When it's going good, that's anybody can be good then, but it's when you're in hard times. So God said, I want, you to, I want to trust you with trouble. So in this story we're going to look at, it's about a man named Daniel. Everyone say Daniel. Daniel. When Daniel was a little boy, he was kidnapped from his family in Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar, who was the king of Babylon. And him and three other boys who were renamed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and a bunch of other kids were kidnapped, taken to Babylon, and they were going to be trained to be Chaldeans, to be leaders, because Daniel was from a noble family, very intelligent, well-groomed, and they said, these guys can serve me. So they said, we're going to train you, we're going to give you uh, uh, Chaldean literature, Chaldean music, Chaldean food, you're going to drink Chaldean wine, and we're going to make you Chaldean because you got potential. And Daniel was faithful. He said, no, me, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we're not going to drink your wine. We want to drink water and eat vegetables for 10 days and see that we are more wise than the people you're training on your stuff. And it ended up being true that they were 10 times more wise, the Bible says. Daniel ended up serving. He was about 16 when this happened. He ended up serving for over 70 years four different kings. He served Nebuchadnezzar. He served uh, Bel uh, Belshazzar. He served Darius. He served Cyrus. And he served as a man of God. And in his service, he was a man of visions and dreams. He interpreted dreams. He had dreams. He saw visions of God. He saw angels come talk to him. And the book of Daniel is the Old Testament version of the book of Revelation. Daniel had a lot of visions and dreams about the end times. He was a man of God. And all through his career, he was always faithful no matter what happened to him, no matter how he was threatened. In the story we're going to read today, he's 70 something years old. And he is serving under King Darius. And under King Darius, uh, he had three governors. And those governors were in charge of the whole kingdom. But Daniel was so 
godly and so blessed that King Darius thought, I'm going to put Daniel over the other two governors and make him over everything. Daniel was referred to as one of the captives, the Jews, even though he's still an old man, he's still that label. He wasn't one of us. He's one of them. So there was always animosity towards him. Matter of fact, there was animosity towards Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were younger men, they uh, were faced with a situation where Nebuchadnezzar made an idol 90 feet high, 9 feet wide of himself and said, I want everybody to bow to my idol. And if you don't bow, you get thrown in the fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we ain't bowing. One of my favorite stories in the Bible, Daniel chapter 3, they had all the music play. Everyone's paying, everyone's bound, everyone's bound. And the, the enemies of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego made this law because they knew they wouldn't bow because they believed in God. And that was the only way they can get rid of them is to make their religion illegal. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're, they're, everyone's bowing and they're not bowing. And the king stops the music and says, look, when the music plays, I want you all to bow or you're going to throw in the fire. Okay, when you hear Michael Jackson go, oh, I want you to bow. So the music plays, da, 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 and then they don't bow. <laughs> they get thrown in the fire. Jesus comes into the fire, saves them. So here, many, many years later, he's never a Daniel. He's an old guy. And all the other governors and administrators, they can't get Daniel because he's too faithful. But they say if we make his religion illegal, that's how we're going to get him because we know he'll be faithful to his religion. So they all go to the king and they make the king sign a decree that cannot be changed. That anybody who prays to any god other than the king gets thrown in the lion's den. Because they know Daniel's going to pray. And God is watching all this happen. And God says, Daniel, I can trust you with trouble. I can trust you. And so we're going to pick up the story. We're going to see what Daniel's going to do. As we read the story, I want you to think about your trouble. I want you to think about what you're going through. I want you to think about, are you being faithful? Are you being trustworthy? Can you tell God, God, you can trust me with my trouble? You can trust me. Everyone say, God. God. Everyone say, God. God. You can trust me. Can trust me. Yeah. <laughs> it's tough. Luke <laughs> says, chapter 6, verse 3. It says, Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. So the governors and satraps sought to find charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find no charge or fault because he was faithful, nor was there any fault or error found in him. Say, God. God. Say, God. God. I don't want you to find any fault in me. Okay. Verse 5, then these men said, we shall not find any charge against Daniel unless we find it against concerning the law of his God. So these governors and satraps thronged before the king, or they bum-rushed the king, and thus said to him, King Darius lived forever, little brown nosing. All the governors of the kingdom, there's only three, and you know Daniel wasn't in this meeting. All the governors of the kingdom and the administrators and satraps, the counselors, and the advisors have consulted together to establish a royal statute and make a firm decree that whoever petitions any god or man for 30 days, except you, O king, shall be cast into the lion's den. Now, O king, establish a decree and sign the writing so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. Therefore, King Darius signed the written decree." So their law was once the decree is assigned, no one can change it. The only way they can overcome it is to sign another decree. But you couldn't take it back. And they knew that. So they go to the king and they say, King, you know, you are the man, king, live forever, bada 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 bing. Why don't you make a decree that no one prays to any other God except you? King said, That sounds good. And where's Daniel? He's not in that meeting. Here's Daniel, 70 years old. He served Babylon, he served Nebuchadnezzar, he sold Belteshazzar. Be he is now a Belshazzar. Now he's serving Darius. He would later serve Cyrus, and he was always faithful. And here's God facing him with this. Why would God do that? Because God can trust him with trouble. Well, you will not always know why God does what he does in your life, but he will test you, and you will always be tested. How many of you know that when you get through your hard times and look back on them, you always thank God for them? They're hard. The Bible says that no, that no chastening seems joyful, but painful. 
but you are trained by it in the fruit of righteousness. Uh, you, you bear fruit of righteousness in your life if you are trained by it. Key word, trained by it. All things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Not all things work together for good. Because all things don't work together for good. Things can work together for bad. you got to love God. What does that mean? That means no matter what happens to you that's bad, painful, unfortunate, if you obey God through it, things will work together for good. Okay? You don't want to stop the movie in the middle of the movie. You've got to wait to the end. The reason you watch movies to the end is because you don't like what's happening in the middle and you want to make sure it happens good at the end. So they make you, they t- give you suspense in the middle because they don't want you to know what's going to happen at the end. So you keep watching and they make you, they make something happen in the middle that you want to change. So you want to wait it out to see if it's going to happen. Same with your life. You got to wait to the end of the movie. And so here's Daniel. Daniel says, hold up, hold up. I can't pray to any other God for 30 days or I'll get thrown in the lion's den. That's right. And here it is, signed by the king. And you know, according to the Medes and Persians, the law of the Medes and Persians, uh, it cannot be changed. Daniel says, cool, what's he going to do? What are you going to do? You don't ever want to use your trials as an excuse to sin or an excuse to cut corners. God wants to trust you. Say, "God, God, you can trust me. Verse 10, when David knew that the writing was signed at it, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since his early days. Uh, Daniel says, I'm getting on my knees, and by the way, I'm going to open the window. (laughs) How y'all doing, governors? Satraps, administrators, all you flunkies out there. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Daniel, to the guys. All you flunkies out there are going to go run back and tell the king, watch this. Three times today I'm going to do this just like I've been doing since I was a kid. Uh, what is your custom? If you don't have one, if your custom is I pray when things are good, that's not a good custom. If your custom is I pray no matter what. Oh, by the way, I give thanks. The Bible says he gave thanks. God, thank you for this opportunity to be trustworthy with trouble because I know people are watching. Look at them over there watching me and they're going to go run to the king. They're watching you. People are watching you. And they want to know, is your God real? They want to know, do you really trust your God or do you only trust him in good times? Look what it says. Verse 11. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. And they went before the king and spoke concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed a decree that every man who petitions any God or a man within 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? And the king answered and said, the thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not alter. So they answered and said before the king, that Daniel, <laughs> that Daniel, that guy. And the king's thinking, well, he's your peer. Matter of fact, I'm thinking of putting, making him your boss. That Daniel, who was one of the captives from Judah, he's one of the, the guys we was kidnapped. He's not even from here. Does not show due regard for you, O king, or for the decree that you sign, but makes petition three times a day. And the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored to the going down of the sun to deliver him. He liked Daniel. Of course, he respected Daniel. He's like, how, this can't be right. I can't, I got to take, I got to help him. Then these men approached the king and said to the king, king, Oh, no, O oh king, that it is the law of the Medes and the Persians that no decree or statute which the king establishes may be changed. So the king gave the command, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, your, oh, watch this. I wonder how many people would say this about you. Your God, whom you serve, continually will deliver you. Uh, you don't have to raise your hand, but I wonder how many of your friends, your coworkers, your neighbors know that you serve God continually. You know, a lot of times I hear about celebrities that are Christian, and then you never heard about it when they, you know, you never hear about it except, you know, if they, if they pass away or some, you hardly ever hear about it. It's like if they're undercover with it. 
they're, they're nice guys and, and nice girls, and they'll take credit for being nice, but they won't give credit to God. You don't want to be that person. You want to give credit to God. Why are you so nice? Well, you know, my mother brought me up right. Well, yeah, it may, may be true, but it's God in your life. He says, Daniel, the, the God you serve all the time, I've watched you serve God. He will deliver you. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they got thrown in the fire, matter of fact, my theory is they jumped in on their own, but that's another story. You, you get my sermon on called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, they jumped in, uh, the fire of commitment, actually, the sermon's called. You can look it up on our website. I believe they jumped in because the guys who were taking them and throwing them in the fire got burnt up and killed by the fire. But the, right before they got thrown in the fire or jumped in the fire, they told the king, King, uh, we're not bound to your idol. Our God whom we serve can deliver us from your fire. And then they said, even if he doesn't, we ain't bound. Even if we die, we ain't bound. So whether we die or not, we're still going to serve him. Ah! You have to come to a commitment in your life that you will serve God no matter what you know or no matter what's going on in your life. Whether you like it, whether it's painful, I am going to be faithful. Say, God, God, you can trust me. Real quick, get out your lesson plan. Three little questions. I just want you to read this, this so it's in your brain. In your lesson plan, hey, waving in the air like you just don't care. Yeah, look at all y'all nightclubbing people. <laughs> okay. One, can you be trusted amidst your trouble to remain faithful to your spiritual disciplines? Well, you got to have spiritual disciplines in the first place. What does that mean? I read my Bible every day. I pray every day. I go to this place every time, same time. It doesn't have to necessarily be the same time, but something like that will help you be more consistent. And then it says, can you be trusted amidst your trouble to let go of everything God has given you? Uh, the, the devil will threaten to take from you what you think you have acquired. God, I trust you. If I'm going to lose something by being honest, I'm going to do it. I trust you. And number three, can you be trusted amidst your trouble to be a reflection of Christ to those who are watching because you are being watched? Every single one of you, just like you watch the people in your life. Verse 16, the king gave a command and they brought Daniel to cast him into the lion's den. But, but, but this king spoke to Daniel, your God whom you serve continually, he would live you. Then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signets of his lords, and the pur that the purpose of concerning Daniel might not be changed. Now the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. No musicians were brought to him. They were bringing musicians to comfort people. He said, I don't want to be comforted. His sleep left from him. He couldn't sleep. The king rose very early in the morning and went in haste. That means he ran to the lion's den. And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice. A lamenting is not a word we would use, but lamenting is, oh, Daniel. That's lamenting. Okay. The king spoke, Daniel, servant of the Most High, uh, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to deliver you from the lion's mouth? And Daniel said, O king, live forever. King, I'm good. There was a whole lot of perina down here up in the catch <laughs> My, <laughs> y'all don't know perina catch <laughs> It just, it just didn't hit it. It just it didn't hit it right. Okay. My God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him and also before you. I have done no wrong. He says, King, I haven't wronged you, but more importantly, I haven't wronged my God. Can you imagine Daniel, 70-something years old, 80, whatever he was, saying, God, I've served you so long. Why are you doing this to me? I can trust you. If I put one of those young fools in here, they'd be running around the den trying to run from the lions, and, and the lions would eat them just to shut them up. But you. <laughs> I, I was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana Friday, came back yesterday, and I spoke at a Promise Keepers event, and about 60 to 70 percent of the men came forward to receive Christ. I was there to give the gospel. And amen, amen. <laughs> It was, it was amazing. So I had a, uh, a three, I got up at 3 o'clock to go and then got up at 3 o'clock San Diego time to come back in the morning. So I, go, I had a 640 flight and had to get to Dallas at 8 and then had a 9 o'clock connection, get home at, right before 11. 
get up early, go to the airport. Uh, the plane has mechanical problems, and we won't be going out, so I'm going to miss my connection, and who knows when we get home. And uh, then about 40 minutes later, they say the plane's fixed. So I think I'm going to make my connection. So we fly, and I'm, I'm, I'm calculating everything. I'm a numbers guy. I'm looking at my wa- I mean, the, the clock, and the lady said 54 minutes. I'm counting the minutes. We're going to land. And if, if you know anything about Dallas Airport, Dallas Airport is about the size of downtown San Diego. <laughs> Can I get an amen from anybody knows? Amen. It is like, I, I, I estimated, and I really should look it up to find out if I'm right, but I'm estimating it's like 10 to 12 square miles. Literally, because you're, you're landing or taking off, and about two miles over there, another plane is taking off. That's how big the airport is. It's like mi- two, three miles that way, two, three miles that way. It's ginormous. And we're in like a little American Eagle, a little tiny plane. So we land, and then we're, you know, I figure, okay, a few minutes to the gate, and then I'm going to run through the airport, because I will run through airports. <laughs> and I have my nice soft shoes on. I'm, this is going to be, I'm going to get to the gate. I don't care where it is, in like two minutes. Forget the tram, I'm running. So we, the, my next flight boards at 8.30, takes off, and it's a 9 o'clock schedule. But if it's a 9 o'clock flight, they close the door at like 10 of, and, it, you know, it's, it's really not 9 o'clock. It's like 10 of. So I figure if I land at 8.30, I can get there in 20 minutes easy. So we land, we land at 8.30. I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be tight. <laughs> and I'm like... I don't, I don't want to miss this flight because who knows, I'm going to get home. And then, and especially when you're coming east to west, you gain time. So I'm like, I'm going to get home. It's going to be morning time. I can still have a little more of my day. And we're going, you know, to the gate. And then we stop. Oh, there's a plane in the way. And, 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 and you know, we can't, we got to wait. Today. And I'm like, ah! And I'm looking out the window. There's a plane sitting there. What the, you know, why is the plane sitting there? What's going on? So then a few minutes later, it's like 8. 40 now, and then, and then they go, and then they, and then they, okay, and then they start moving. No lie, the gate is 30 feet away, and they stop. 20 minutes. Everybody, 15 minutes, something, way too long. And I was like, And there was a pastor, uh, Tony Evans from, uh, uh, he's a preacher from Dallas. He was sitting two seats over because we were at the event together. And I'm like, Tone, this is your town. Do something, man. Do something. <laughs> he's like in the chair doing this. He's like, Tone, it ain't working, man. It ain't working. You don't have any juice. Call somebody up. Literally, the gate is right there. I'm like, can I get out? Let me walk. I can, I can make my flight. I know that's my plane right there. That's got to be my plane right there. I, I, and my wife knows I, I, I get, and I'm like this. I'm, I'm literally just shaking. I'm hit my leg. I'm trying not to go crazy. And I'm like, somebody do something. Somebody do something. And we sat there literally, and my, my, I don't know, we, we probably got there 8.35. We sat there 15, 20 minutes. And finally I get out. I run to the tram, run, and I get to the counter at 9 o'clock. And they went, and I, and I, I knew because the door was closed. But, I, yeah, I got to work it. I'm like, I'm like, breathe, breathe, Bruce Lee. Oh. Is there any way? Please. And, and the lady wouldn't listen. She was like, oh, no, it left. I'm like, no, no, I need compassion right now. You need to look me in the eye. I didn't say this to her, but I'm thinking, feel, I, you, I, I got to feel me. I need, I just let me go through the door. I know it's right there. Uh, it's just one guy. Uh, she said, oh, no, she, she said, it, she, it, it left. It's gone. But you, know, you got to wait. So I got bumped to the 10 o'clock. I didn't get on that one. Bumped to the 11 o'clock. Didn't get on that one. And then I was at the 12 o'clock. And by that time, I just like, whatever. God must want me on this 12, 1245 flight. Uh, but when I was on that plane, I was losing my salvation. <laughs> Not for real. I, I literally could hear my wife telling me, uh, relax. <laughs> relax. It's going to be okay. And when I'm like that, my wife touches my hat. I get so mad. Like, oh, leave me alone. Let me. <laughs> Let me just be mad right now. How many of y'all can identify, right? And you know what I was thinking about? 
this sermon. God said, Miles, 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 can I trust you with this trouble? I said, no. <laughs> no, not right now. I don't want to be thinking about that right now. I, this is a real conversation God is having with me. He's like, you are tripping right now. What is wrong with you? I'm like, I want to get off this plane, God. I, I want to go home. He says, relax, son. Verse 23, the king was exceedingly glad for him, and he commanded they should take Daniel up out of the lion's den. So Daniel was taken up out of the lion's den, and no injury whatever was found on him because he believed God. You have to believe God. God, I don't like this. I don't know how many of y'all have my Miles a Minute app. If you don't have an app called Miles a Minute, you go to milesaminute.com, you go to the the iTunes store and get it. It's a free app and you get a one minute video from me every day, a one minute devotional. And it's for a whole year, so I did 365 of them plus. My favorite one is about my wife. But it's not a good thing about my wife. <laughs> she knows this is my favorite because it's hilarious. Every time my wife and I go on it, on a, on a long drive, 20 minutes into the drive, 17 minutes, she says, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I mean, okay, we're leaving. Go to the bathroom. Okay, you go to the bathroom. Okay, you ready? You good? Everything good? Okay, we're good. Uh, I, uh, you're not going to like this, but I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> And my personality is that when, once I get on the road, I want to get there. I don't care if it's a 20-hour drive. I don't want to stop. We get gas, like, driving. We have a thing come up right next to us. I don't want to stop. We get food in the car. Let's go. So we're driving to L.A. Friday afternoon. And we're right in Orange County, trying to beat the traffic. I have to go to the bathroom. This is one of my miles of minutes because I'm sitting in Denny's parking lot while traffic is building up on the 5 freeway. <laughs> Patience is defined as long-suffering. <laughs> Not for real. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, or love, joy, peace, long-suffering. Patience isn't patience until you are suffering. This is so important because if everything's going good, you're not being patient. It's when the, your neck <laughs> starts to crawl, and that's where you got to go. <sighs> like if you go to the mall and you see men with bags walking behind their wife. Pray for those dudes. Amen. Trust me, I look for those guys. I'm like, be strong, brother, be strong. <laughs> it's almost over. <laughs> and they have benches outside of the stores for us. <laughs> now we sit there and our wives are in the store. Matter of fact, my wife and I were in Vegas. We were in Vegas for my birthday, her birthday, I can't remember what it was. Oh, it was my birthday. And, 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 and I was like, you know, I, I was, we were there for a weekend. And I was like, you know, I, I want to do something. I want to, you know, have some fun. And I ended up shopping. I don't like shopping. She's shopping. I'm in the mall part waiting for her to come out the store. I was like, how did this happen? She says, well, if you make me happy, I'll make you happy. <laughs> uh, God is going to allow you and, and trust you with situations that you have to be patient, that you have to trust, that you have to just let him be God. And you're not always going to know why. You're not always going to know what's going to go on. You just have to trust him. My wife, we lived in Penasquitas. I mean, uh, we did, but we lived in Scripture France for 13 years. 
And right down the hill from our park, from our house was a park, and I was running that park and all the time. And for years, I would see this Asian couple. They were el- elderly <laughs> in the park, walking to the park, walking from the park. They were both about the same height. No, they just were. I'm just describing it to you. Don't be reading anything into what I'm saying. They were both about the same height, and they were always walking together. And my wife and I would see them. I would see them. We were like, oh, they're so cute. I can't, we're, you know, we're going to grow up be old together. We practice getting old. We sit on the couch, put blankets over our legs. <laughs> Drink tea, kiss like this, that's it, you know. <laughs> so this couple, I would see them all the time, and I'm running. I would always see them, and, and there was, you know, a couple of fields, so I would always run. And if I run around the field multiple times, they were there. And a lot of times, they were either walking around the park or doing Tai Chi together, which was cool because they, they would do it together. They would do the same thing at the same time, which was kind of to me like oneness. And I was just wondering how... One, they were after being together, I would assume, a long time. And so year after year, I would see them. I never spoke to them. And I would see them just doing their thing, and then they'd walk, and then they'd come back. And i see them only in that park, only on the street to the park. I didn't know where they lived. And then one day, after years of seeing them together, I only saw the woman by herself. I was like, ah. Oh. Then I ran, and I came back. A few days later, saw her again by herself. I was like, oh. And then I kept seeing her by herself. And I said, I got to know what happened to her husband. So I was running. I stopped. And I said, how are you? You know, my name is Miles. I see you out here all the time. I see you with your husband. How's your husband? And she says, ni hao ma. And she didn't speak English. I got to know. I got to know. <laughs> Oh, no English, no English, no English. Husband, husband, ha, cha, ji, da, da, they're right here. You're here. <laughs> I never found out. <laughs> she said, it means thank you. I walked away. I said, I, I ran away like, what happened? I, I have no idea what happened to him. God's not always going to tell you what you want to know. You are going to have... Stuff in your life, and you say, I got to know this, I got to know that. And God says, nope. I just want you to trust me. I just want you to trust me. In a minute, we're going to pray, and I want to challenge you, especially all y'all who are going through something, and just say, God, you can trust me. You can trust me with this. I will be faithful just because. Lord, thank you so much for your faithfulness. Thank you so much for trusting us with trouble. We know trouble purifies our heart, purifies our motives. In a minute, I'm going to pray, and there's some of you who need to cast your burdens on God. You need to cast your life at his feet. I want you to pray with me if you want to cast your burdens on him and trust him. And count yourself worthy to be trusted. In the privacy of your heart, pray, dear God, you can trust me. I cast my burden on you. I cast my fear, my lack of faith. I lay it at your feet. I surrender my life into your hand. Everything I am is yours. I don't want to hold on to anything except you, so you can trust me. Thank you, God. As our eyes are closed and our heads are bowed, if you pray that prayer, I'm just going to ask you in a count of three to stand. And by standing, you are just making public confession, God, I can trust you. So in the count of three, wherever you are, and only about sites and our micro sites, our multi sites, if you pray that prayer, I just want to ask you to stand on the count of three. One, two, three. Stand to your feet. God bless you. Good, 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 good. Very good, very good, very good, very good. Good, good. God, I pray as they stand that you heal all the pain, that you comfort them, you encourage them, that you let them know amidst what they're going through, you are right there. Just like you were with Daniel in the lion's den, just like you were with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire. 
you are with them where they are. We thank you. God bless you. God bless you. We see you all over the room. We see you in the balcony. God bless you. In a minute, I'm going to ask you to come forward. If you're in the balcony, all you got to do is turn around and walk up, and the ushers will bring you down. So right now, if you're standing up, come out of your seat. Come on down to the altar, and let's give them a hand. They come on down. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. You're welcome. You're welcome. God bless you. 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 How you doing? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Let's give him a big hand. Come on now. God bless you. 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 Come forward, everybody. Come forward, everybody. God bless you. 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 Did I get you? God bless you. Amen. Uh, let me say this. We all go through trouble. We all will always have trouble. And uh, you, you want to tell God, God, I trust you. You will not always know why, how you're going to get through. God's ways are not your ways. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so are his ways and thoughts above yours. He has resources and options that you don't have. Just got to trust him. And it's really the process of trusting him is what he's most interested in. Because when you get through the other side, you go, I get it now. When David, when, when David killed Goliath, he, he told King Saul before he fought Goliath, because King Saul didn't want little David fighting a giant. And little David said, God got me through fighting a bear and a lion. He already got me through that, so I know he can get me through this. If you think about all the times God got you through before, it's just another one. It may be bigger than you, it's not bigger than God. It's just different. Lord, thank you so much for trusting us. Lord, we want to be trustworthy, and I pray that we would all reevaluate the decisions we're making and the trouble we're in, that we would make decisions that tell God we trust him. In Jesus' name, amen. Take a right turn and walk this way. Let's give him a hand. They go out.